In this session, we will discuss about venous drainage of lower limb. Actually, in case of lower limb, there will be three types of veins. First one is superficial veins, second deep veins, third perforating veins. If you take the superficial veins first, they are present in the superficial fascia. That means they are present over the deep fascia. Otherwise, they are present in between the deep fascia and the skin. Another type, they are present in the deeper part. They are present along with the arteries. Those veins what we call deep veins. Then perforating veins. Perforating veins are nothing but the veins which are connecting the superficial veins to the deep veins. Those veins what we call perforating veins. Let me tell you about those things. See here. Imagine this is the skin. Here is the skin of the limb. This is schematic view. Next to the skin. Superficial fascia will be there. After superficial fascia, deep fascia. So, this is deep fascia of the limb. Then, in the deeper aspect, we can form the veins. These veins, what we call deep veins. These are the veins which are present in the deeper aspect of the limb. Those veins, what we call deep veins. For suppose, this is one deep vein. This is skin, this is deep fascia, and here, Superficial fascia. Within the superficial fascia, you can found the veins, those veins what we call superficial veins. Now I am drawing superficial veins here. This is superficial vein. These superficial veins are connected with the deep veins either directly or through the veins which are present in the muscles. Otherwise, venous sinuses which are present in the muscles. So, these superficial veins connecting to the deep veins either directly or indirectly. First, I will show you direct perforators or direct communications. See here, this is superficial vein and this is deep vein. Here, this superficial vein connected with the deep vein by perforators. This is the perforator vein. And on either end, that means on both ends, superficial end and deep end, there will be valves. What are these? Valves are present. Why valves are present? Venous blood from the superficial veins to the deep vein. So, these valves will allow the blood from the superficial veins to the deep veins. But they will not allow the blood from the deep to superficial. Only superficial to deep. For that, these valves are helpful. These valves which are present in the perforator veins, they prevent the bidirectional blood flow, only unidirectional. From where to where? From superficial to deep, not from deep to superficial. These are the direct perforators. Then, deep veins are present in between the muscles, is it? For suppose, if you take the soleus muscle, I am drawing soleus muscle here. This is the soleus muscle, okay? This is also schematic view. This is the soleus muscle. Within the soleus muscle, you can found some venous sinuses. That means some venous blood filled spaces are present within the soleus muscle. Okay. So, here venous blood filled spaces are there. Now, this perforator, the perforator vein which is connecting the superficial vein to the venous sinuses first. After that, from the venous sinuses to the deep veins. So, First, blood will enter into the venous sinuses which are present in the muscles. Then, from the venous sinuses, blood will be entering into the deep veins through this perforator. That means, it is not direct perforator, it is indirect perforator. Even these perforators also having valves, those valves will allow the unidirectional blood flow. So, here valves are present. Here also valves are present and here also valves are present. At the each end of perforators, you can form the Valves. Those valves will prevent the bidirectional blood flow. They allow only unidirectional blood flow from superficial to deep, not from deep to superficial. Actually, see here, in the soleus, some blood filled spaces are there. Those are what we call sinuses, venous sinuses. First, what will happen? Venous blood from the superficial veins enters into the venous sinuses. Then, when muscle contracts, blood which is present in the venous sinuses will be pushed into the deep veins. That means, it will be pumping into the deep veins. Again, this muscle will be relaxed, you know. When muscle is relaxed, 
the blood which is present in the superficial veins again it enters into the venous sinuses it is working like our heart is it because of that soleus muscle we can also called as peripheral heart of the body so this is indirect perforator and this is the direct perforator very simple perforators are nothing but the veins which are connecting the superficial veins to the deep veins is that clear so these are the three types of veins superficial veins deep veins and perforator veins so these are the different types of veins now we will discuss about superficial veins actually two main superficial veins are there in the lower limb those are great saphenous vein and small saphenous vein the literal meaning of saphenous means easily visible so here this is the dorsum of foot right in the dorsum of foot there will be dorsal venous arch here one arch will be there this arch what we call dorsal venous arch right how this dorsal venous arch will form i'll tell you first let me draw the dorsal venous arch this is the dorsal venous arch this is the dorsal venous arch how this dorsal venous arch will form see here this is a great toe second toe third fourth fifth toe from the adjacent sides of great toe and second toe here these veins are there these veins what we call digital veins they are draining the adjacent sides of first toe and second toe and these digital veins are united and forms the dorsal metatarsal vein see this is the dorsal metatarsal vein that is this is first dorsal metatarsal vein in the same way adjacent sides of second and third drained by proper digital veins these veins are united and forms the second dorsal metatarsal vein then in the same way here is third dorsal metatarsal vein here fourth dorsal metatarsal vein now here first second third fourth these are the dorsal metatarsal veins right all these dorsal metatarsal veins are united over the dorsum of foot and forms the dorsal venous arch this dorsal venous arch is present just distal to the bases of metatarsal bones is it so this is the dorsal venous arch very simple dorsal venous arch is formed by first second third fourth dorsal metatarsal veins are united and forms the dorsal venous arch so here is the dorsal venous arch on the dorsum of foot now you must be thinking the medial side of the great toe and the lateral side of little toe venous drainage is not there how it will be drained see here from the medial side of great toe one vein will be arising and it will be opening into the dorsal venous arch this vein what we call medial marginal vein from the lateral side of the little toe one vein is draining this vein what we call lateral marginal vein now here is the union of medial marginal vein and the medial end of dorsal venous arch these two are united and forms the great saphenous vein and if you observe here lateral marginal vein and the lateral end of dorsal venous arch united and forms a small saphenous vein now you know how small saphenous vein has been formed and how great saphenous vein has been formed now we will see the course of small saphenous and course of great saphenous first we will discuss about the course of great saphenous vein see here great saphenous vein has been formed by the union of medial end of dorsal venous arch and the medial marginal vein then after formation it runs in front of what is this malleolus medial malleolus see here i have drawn the tibia here actually there will be projection from the lower end of the tibia that projection what you call medial malleolus 2.5 cm in front of the medial malleolus this great saphenous vein running upwards then when it reaches to the lower part of the leg it crosses the tibia that means at the lower one third of the leg great saphenous vein will crosses the medial surface see this is the medial surface of the tibia so at the lower one third of the leg medial surface of the tibia will be crossed by great saphenous vein after crossing the medial surface of the lower one third of the tibia it ascends upwards along the medial border of the tibia otherwise finger breadth finger breadth means what this much finger breadth behind the medial border of the tibia so it ascends finger breadth behind the medial border of the tibia after that 
it is appearing in the what is this fossa here popliteal fossa so it appears in the roof of the popliteal fossa then from the popliteal fossa it runs upwards obliquely in the medial aspect of the thigh see it is running upwards along the medial aspect of the thigh and it reaches to the opening here what is this opening called saphenous opening it reaches to the saphenous opening actually saphenous opening will be covered by one fascia what is that fascia called cribriform fascia so it pierces the cribriform fascia and it opens to the femoral vein so this is the course of great saphenous vein recollect great saphenous vein is formed by medial end of dorsal venous arch and the medial marginal vein it runs upwards 2.5 cm in front of the medial manulus then it crosses the lower one third of the medial surface of the tibia then it runs upwards finger breadth behind the medial border of the tibia then it passes behind the medial condyle appear in the roof of the popliteal fossa from there it runs obliquely upwards along the medial aspect of the thigh and reaches to the saphenous opening where it pierces the cribriform fascia and opens into the femoral vein is that clear so this is about the great saphenous vein now we will see what are the different tributaries of great saphenous vein and what are the different perforators of great saphenous vein see here this is a first tributary that means medial marginal vein is the first tributary then from the anterior aspect of the leg venous blood will be drained by one vein that runs upwards and crosses the shin of the tibia that means anterior border of the tibia and opens into the great saphenous vein just below the knee so this vein what you call anterior leg vein otherwise anterior vein of the leg this vein what you call anterior leg vein then behind the medial malleolus there will be series of there will be series of venous arches connecting the medial ankle perforators these are the series of venous arches they are connecting the medial ankle perforators from these venous arches vein is arising that vein what do you call posterior arch vein this is also opening into the great saphenous vein below the knee so this is posterior arch vein and this is anterior leg vein then if you coming to the tributaries in the thigh region from the anterior and lateral aspect of the thigh one vein will be arising that vein will be opening into the saphenous vein so this vein what you call antero lateral vein in some books this vein labeled as anterior cutaneous vein of thigh anything is okay so this vein what do you call anterior cutaneous vein of thigh or we can also called as antero lateral vein then from the posterior medial part of the thigh venous drainage is by the vein called posterior medial vein what is vein called posterior medial vein this is antero lateral vein this is the posterior medial vein this vein we can also call as anterior cutaneous vein of thigh then some other tributaries are there before piercing the cribriform fascia what are those veins see here from the external genitalia one vein is coming that vein is superficial vein what is this superficial external pudendal what is vein called superficial external pudendal then here from the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall one vein is coming that is also superficial this vein what you call superficial epigastric vein so what is this superficial epigastric vein then from the lateral aspect one vein is coming like this this vein what you call superficial circumflex iliac vein superficial circumflex iliac vein so these are the three veins which are opening into the saphenous vein before piercing the cribriform fascia itself these three veins will be opening into the great saphenous vein but 
after piercing the cribriform fascia, just before opening into the femoral vein, there will be opening of one more vein. What is that vein called? Deep external pudendal. What is this? Deep external pudendal. So, superficial external pudendal, deep external pudendal, superficial epigastric, superficial circumflex iliac. So, these are the tributaries. They are opening into the great saphenous vein just before termination. Actually, if you wanted to say very specifically, superficial epigastric, superficial external pudendal, superficial circumflex iliac. These three veins be opening into the great saphenous vein just before piercing the cribriform fascia. But deep external pudendal will be opening into the great saphenous vein after piercing the cribriform fascia. This is the difference. So, these are the tributaries of great saphenous vein. Recollect anterior leg vein, posterior arch vein, anterior lateral vein, or we can also call it as anterior cutaneous vein of thigh, then Posterior medial vein, then superficial epigastric vein, superficial external pudendal vein, superficial circumflex iliac vein, and deep external pudendal vein. So, these are the tributaries of great saphenous vein. Then we will see the perforators. Perforators means what? This is the superficial vein. From the superficial vein to the deep vein, communications are there now. These communications what we call perforator veins. So, here great saphenous vein having perforators. That means from the great saphenous vein to the deep veins, some communications are there. What are those communications? We will see now. We know that here, this part, there is a canal called adductor canal. At the adductor canal level, there will be one perforating branch. This perforating branch is piercing the deep fascia and reaches deeply and opens into the femoral vein. So, this perforator, what we call adductor canal perforator or hunter canal perforator. Because it is connecting the great saphenous vein with the femoral vein at the level of Hunter's canal. Next, see here, this is the knee, below the knee, there will be one perforator which is connecting the great saphenous vein with the posterior tibial vein, which is connecting with the posterior tibial vein. So, this perforator what we call below knee perforator. What is this perforator called? below knee perforator. Then, see here, this is the posterior arch vein. This vein what we call posterior arch vein. This posterior arch vein is connected with the posterior tibial vein only by three perforators. These three perforators what we call medial ankle perforators. What are these? Medial ankle perforators. These are three in number, superior, middle and inferior. This is the superior or upper perforator. This is the middle perforator and here is the lower perforator. If you take the superior perforator, it is present at the level of the middle third and lower third. That means upper two third and the lower one third of the leg. At this level, this perforator is connecting the posterior arch vein with the posterior tibial vein. Then, if you come into the third perforator or lower perforator, this perforator is present below and behind the middle malus just below and behind the medial malus. This is also connecting with the posterior tibial vein. Then, second one is there, no? Second one is present in between these two. Otherwise, if you wanted to say exactly, at the level of the upper part of the medial malus. So, these are the medial ankle perforators. Why we call this medial ankle perforator? Somewhere there will be lateral ankle perforators also. Okay, that we will discuss over there. So, these are the different perforators. Actually, these superficial veins are thick walled because of more amount of smooth muscle fibers and uh, abundant connective tissue which contains collagen fibers and elastic fibers. Because of that, these superficial veins are thicker and contains many walls. Actually, great saphenous vein contains around 12 to 15, otherwise 10 to 15 walls. What is the function of these walls? These walls will separate the long column of blood into short columns. Why? Blood has to ascend up against the gravity from the lower limbs. Is it or not? So, actually, you must be studied factors influencing the venous return. In that, one factor is walls, right? They are present both in the deep veins and also superficial veins. What are these called? Walls. They prevent the backflow of blood, is it? And they divide the long column of the blood into short columns, is it? So, 
In case of superficial veins, that means in case of great saphenous vein, 12 to 15 valves are present. In that 12 to 15, one is present just before it is piercing the fibriform fascia. One is at the junction, at the junction of femoral vein and the great saphenous vein. This junction what we call S F J. S F J means what? Saphano femoral junction. At the saphenous femoral junction, there will be wall. Then this femoral vein continues as what? External iliac vein. So it will be continues as external iliac vein. Of course, it will be united with internal iliac vein and forms the common iliac vein. Actually, in the iliac vein, also there will be wall. Actually, in the 80% of the peoples, this wall will be present. Remaining 20% unfortunate peoples, this wall will not be present. They are only victims of varicose vein. This is about the great saphenous vein. Now we will discuss about the small saphenous vein. See here. We know that small saphenous vein is formed by lateral marginal vein and the lateral end of dorsal venous arch. It has been formed by the union of lateral marginal vein and the lateral end of dorsal venous arch. So, this is the small saphenous vein. This small saphenous vein is running behind the lateral malleus. In this picture, I cannot show. In that picture, I will try to show. See, this is a posterior aspect of the leg. So, here, this is the lateral malleus. So, here, this projection is there, no? This projection, what you call lateral malleus. After formation, we know how it has been formed. It has been formed by the union of lateral marginal vein and the lateral end of dorsal venous arch. Then, it runs behind the, what is this malleus? Lateral malleus. It is running behind the lateral malleus and it ascends upward along the lateral margin. See, this is the lateral side, this is the medial side. So, it runs along the lateral margin of one tendon which is present here. What is the tendon? You can see the muscle like this. Have to tell me what is this? This is the muscle. This is the muscular part and this lower part is tendinous part. What is this? Tendoaculus or tendocalcaneus. So, it runs along the lateral border of tendocalcaneus or tendoachilles. After that, it runs in the middle of the leg. It runs in the middle of the leg and it ascends upwards. When it reaches to the popliteal fossa, it pierces the deep fascia and it opens into the popliteal vein. This is the course. So, this is the small surface vein. Very simple. Small saphenous vein is formed by the union of lateral marginal vein and lateral end of dorsal venous arch. It passes behind the lateral malleus, ascends along the lateral margin of the tendoaculus, and runs in the posterior aspect of the middle part of the leg. And when it reaches to the popliteal fossa, it pierces the deep fascia and it opens into the popliteal vein. Is that clear? The small saphenous vein also having one perforator. Right? So, that perforator what we call lateral, lateral ankle perforator. What is this? Lateral ankle perforator. It connects the small saphenous vein with the peroneal vein. So, what are the areas which will be drained by the small saphenous vein? Very simple. Lateral margin of the foot. See, this is the lateral margin of foot. Lateral margin of foot, heel and posterior part of the leg. This area will be drained by small saphenous vein. This area what we call small saphenous territory. Actually, small saphenous vein also contains walls. They are 8 to 10 in number. So, this is about the small saphenous vein and this is the great saphenous vein. Here, there are two MCQs. This is the small saphenous vein. Along the small saphenous vein, there will be one nerve. That means, lateral to the small saphenous vein, there will be one nerve. That nerve is sural nerve in the lower part. In the upper part, posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh. But if you remember, sural nerve, that is sufficient. They will ask the nerve which is present along the small saphenous vein. That is sural nerve. Then, along the anterior part of the great saphenous vein, there will be nerve. That nerve is saphenous nerve. These are the two MCQ. Now, we will discuss very briefly about the great saphenous vein and small saphenous vein. See here. Great saphenous vein is formed by the medial end of dorsal venous arch, medial marginal vein. It ascends upwards 2.5 cm in front of the medial malleus. Then it crosses the medial surface of the lower one third of the tibia. Then it runs upwards along the medial border of the tibia, otherwise 
finger breadth behind the medial border of the tibia and appears in the roof of the popliteal fossa otherwise it is present behind the knee joint then it ascends obliquely upwards along the medial aspect of the thigh and reaches to the saphenous opening where it pierces the cribriform fascia and opens into the femoral vein this is the course then if you come into the tributaries this is the first tributary medial marginal vein is the first tributary then anterior leg vein posterior arch vein anterolateral vein posterior medial vein superficial epigastric vein superficial circumflex iliac vein superficial axonal pudendal deep axonal pudendal these are the tributaries then what are the perforators at the level of the adductor canal one perforator is there that perforator what called adductor canal perforator otherwise hunter's canal perforator or hunter's perforator this perforator is connecting the great saphenous vein with the femoral vein then biloni perforator biloni perforator is connecting the great saphenous vein with the posterior tibial vein then medial ankle perforator there are three in number upper middle and lower upper present at the level of the junction at the upper two third and lower one third it is connecting the posterior arch vein with the posterior tibial vein then lower one it is present just below and behind the medial malleolus see this is the medial malleolus just below and behind the medial malleolus and it connects the posterior tibial vein with the posterior arch vein in between these two perforators there will be middle perforator it is present at the level of the upper margin of medial malleolus it is also connecting the posterior arch vein with the posterior tibial vein so these are the perforators it contains 12 to 15 valves in that 12 to 15 just before piercing the cribriform fascia one and at the junction of great saphenous vein and femoral vein that junction what we call saphno femoral junction there one valve will be present remaining valves will be distributed along the course of this vein now small saphenous vein small saphenous vein is formed by the lateral end of dorsal venous arch and the lateral marginal vein then it appears or it ascends behind the lateral malleolus then it runs along the lateral margin of the tendocalcaneus and runs upwards in the middle of the leg when it reaches to the lower part of the popliteal fossa it pierces the deep fascia and opens into the popliteal vein and it is also having one perforator that perforator is lateral ankle perforator that will be connecting the small saphenous vein with the peroneal vein is that clear so this is a venous drainage of lower limb right now we will discuss about the applied aspects we know that normally blood has to go from superficial to deep not from deep to superficial then blood has to go from below upwards not from above downwards blood has to go from superficial to deep only not from deep to superficial except in one case what is that case see here the veins which are present in the sole those are what we call medial plantar vein and lateral plantar vein those medial and lateral plantar veins will be draining into the dorsal metatarsal veins that means only in the sole of course in the palm also perforator veins are draining the blood from deep to superficial in the remaining places only from superficial to deep not from deep to superficial so in case of medial plantar vein and lateral plantar vein actually these are deep veins in case of those veins perforators are connecting from plantar veins to the tributaries of dorsal venous arch by perforators only in case of sole venous blood will be coming from deep to superficial that means from the plantar veins to the dorsal venous arch in remaining all cases blood has to go from superficial to deep not from deep to superficial why it is happening here because of the pressure so what are the criteria here blood has to go from superficial to deep blood has to go from below upwards not above downwards then from the sinuses of muscles blood has to go from sinuses to the deep veins not from sinuses to superficial veins is that clear if you consider these points we can discuss the applied aspect for suppose valves which are present in the superficial veins if they are incompetent that means incompetence means they are not working properly in the superficial veins valves are there when blood is ascending up those valves will be closed so that blood which is present above the valves will not be regurgitated back but if the valves which are present in the superficial veins are incompetent when blood ascends up that blood will be regurgitated back which leads to dilatation of the superficial veins that dilatation of superficial veins and their tributaries what we call varicose vein or varicosities varicose vein is nothing but dilatation of superficial veins because of the accumulation of more blood that condition what we call varicose vein 
that will happen because of incompetency of the walls which are present in the superficial veins that is one reason then if there is failure of perforators failures of perforators means what the walls which are present in the perforators if they are failed unidirectional blood flow will not be there bidirectional blood flow that means the blood which is present in the deep veins will be coming back whenever the muscle is contracted see here muscles are present around the deep veins no when the muscles are contracted blood will be pumping from deep to superficial that means within a seconds superficial veins will be filled because this type of failure what we call high pressure leaks what are this high pressure leaks why because of the muscular contraction blood which is present in the deep veins will be pushing or pumping into the superficial veins so that superficial veins will be dilated is that clear so that is one more reason then if we coming to the sinuses that means venous sinuses which are present in the muscles in case of deep vein thrombosis deep vein thrombosis means what actually the people who are in prolonged bed rest without any limb movement in that time these venous sinuses are filled with blood no clotting of blood in the venous sinuses which leads to dangerous condition pulmonary embolism and also varicose vein how see here after deep vein thrombosis these perforators will be recanalized no during recanalization these walls will become incompetent that time whenever this muscle is contracted instead of blood going to the deep veins this vein again it is pumping back into the superficial veins which leads to varicose vein right then what are the causes actually at the third trimester of pregnancy because of the compression of iliac veins because of the enlargement of uterus varicose vein will occur of course after termination of pregnancy it may become normal so that is one cause and uh, uh, the people who are in the long standing profession and the people who are not having valve in the iliac vein these are the victims of varicose vein so if there is incompetency of the superficial veins or if there is incompetency in the perforators or in case of deep vein thrombosis there will be chance of getting varicose vein if there is varicosity is enlarged too much the skin over the varicosity is that means skin over the varicose veins becomes pigmented and it will not get proper nutrition because of that it will undergoes necrosis if it undergoes necrosis which leads to ulcers that ulcers what we call varicose ulcers if there is varicose ulcers through the ulcers blood will leak out that means bleeding through the varicose ulcers so if there is incompetency of either superficial veins or perforator veins which leads to dilatation of superficial veins that condition what we call varicose vein over the area of varicosity skin become pigmented and it will be suffering from the loss of nutrition which leads to ulcerations those ulcerations what we call varicose ulcers through that ulcers blood will leak out that means bleeding from the varicose ulcers such ulcers will bleed profusely which warrants the immediate surgery we have to treat this it is equal to heart bleeds from back flow of blood that means heart is bleeding from the back door so that is about varicosity of veins and varicose ulcers we discussed that there is a valve at the cephalofemoral junction if this valve is incompetent which leads to back flow of blood from the femoral vein to the superficial vein that means from the femoral vein to the great cephalus vein so which leads to varicosity in that case what we have to do we have to strip off this vein that means we have to remove this vein how see here in front of the medial malleolus we have to make incision and we have to insert the flexible wire after that when it reaches here we have to strip off the complete vein by making it inside out before doing that we have to ligate these veins these superficial veins we have to ligate so this operation what we call stripping off these days instead of removing like this they are doing either sclerotherapy or laser surgery sclerotherapy means they will inject the some sclerotic material which leads to formation of scar within the veins in case of laser surgeries they will introduce the catheter into the vein at the end of the catheter laser beam will be emitted which will be keep on closing this vein instead of complete removal of vein just we are closing the vein in case of laser surgery okay anything is okay result is same right and one more importance of this is in case of bypass surgeries to bypass the block for suppose in the coronary arteries somewhere here is a block we have to bypass this block we have to connect like this to do this bypass surgery we need graft no for this 
they will take the great suffering only but they will not keep as it is they will make it reverse because inside great suffering is having walls because of that they will make it inside out then they will be connecting so this is one applied aspect then if you wanted to test whether the varicose vein is because of the superficial vein incompetency or the perforator incompetency we have to do one test that test what we call tourniquet test or perth test or we can also call as trendlenberg test so if you wanted to do the test you have to ask the patient to lie down and elevate the limb above the body level and let it drain the whatever the blood which is present in the superficial veins that means we have to make it empty if it is not empty by itself we have to stroke it so that blood which is present in the superficial veins will be drained into the deep veins and the superficial veins become empty after that we have to tie with tourniquet at the upper part of the thigh so that great saphenous vein will be compressed is it otherwise we have to compress the saphenous femoral junction now we have to ask the patient to stand and we have to wait for 30 seconds or 30 seconds to 1 minute now if you are observing the filling of the superficial veins that means this perforator are leaking if you do any exercise this filling of the blood will be still more faster because it comes back right that means it's like a high pressure leak that represents the incompetency in the perforators after tying here we have to ask the patient to stand and we have to ask the patient to do little exercise if the varicosities are empty within 30 seconds which represents the competency of the perforators within that time if the varicosities are filled which represents the incompetency of the perforators then if you wanted to test the superficial vein incompetency you have to repeat the same procedure so we have to ask the patient to lie down elevate the limb make it superficial veins are empty then we have to compress at the saphenofemoral junction by either tourniquet or by the compression then we have to ask the patient to stand now suddenly you have to remove the tourniquet or the compression which leads to sudden filling of superficial veins which represents the incompetency of the superficial veins so this is a test to check either incompetency in the superficial veins or perforator veins these are the few applied aspects related to the venous drainage of lower limb